It's Marcus Benjamin, and we're here for another episode of Living in the Black. How exciting it has been over the past month to hear your comments, to listen to your feedback, and to see how this show is being a blessing to you, your friends, your family, and your colleagues. So guess what? As always, I want you to go ahead and share this. If you're on Dominion TV, share this. If you're on YouTube, share this. Tweet this out and let them know that living in the black is happening right now. Here's your Be Unlocked moment from Cami Smith, freedom fighter and founder of Be Unlocked. Visit his website at www.beunlocked.com. How exciting! Today, we're going to be talking about a subject that is near and dear to my heart. Across the country, guess what? Kids are going back to school. Listen, parents are excited. Yes, parents are excited. They've got their schedule back. They don't have to run around to camps and so forth. They've got this time to get stability back in their life. Teachers are receiving kids from preschool all the way up to high school and college. But you know, there's one factor in all of this that's you know, somewhat hidden, but it's on the hearts of many people. That factor is the factor of parenting. Yeah, it's the factor of parenting. Now, if you remember, as we began to share what living in the black was all about, there are five gray spaces for living in the black, right? You have uh, the spiritual, we have the emotional, we have the intellectual, we have the relational, and then we have the physical. So we're zooming in this month on the relational. We're zooming in on relational and we're going to talk specifically about parenting because parents are sending their kids back to school and it's on our minds. Have we prepared our children for the temptations, the challenges of school? Have we uh, cultivated a sense of God awareness in their hearts? Are we working with them to ensure that they're not in the red in areas because we know kids get in trouble when they are deficient in certain emotional uh, and spiritual qualities. So we're going to spend the whole month talking about parenting and we're going to talk about parenting from the basis of a book that I, that I wrote called Unscripted Responsibility. Yes, Unscripted Responsibility. Have you uh, ever you know, tried to go and find a real good book on parenting. There's been some really good books because we look back over our life and what do we find? Parenting wasn't something that we received a script for. I mean, it wasn't like we went to a class and they broke down all the nuances and particulars of parenting and so forth. But no, many of us are parenting in response to how we were parented, as opposed to having a kingdom of God perspective of parenting, as opposed to having a biblical philosophy about parenting that produces specific outcomes in the lives of our children. And so uh, this entire month, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the unscripted responsibility of parenting. And we're gonna look at parenting from a kingdom of God perspective. Now we know that Jesus told us in Matthew chapter six, he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto us. So it says, seek first the kingdom of God. That means the priority. It means the, the, the standard. It means the first place of principle is from the kingdom of God. Now, guess what? If the kingdom of God is the perspective, the paradigm of the kingdom of God is the overall idea that we should be looking unto, then that means we have to temporarily suspend how we were parented. Yes, we have to temporarily suspend how we were raised. We have to temporarily suspend how we think we should parent in order to look into the kingdom of God and discover his blueprint for parenting, discover its perspective of parenting. Now, let me give you just a, a brief background. I was raised in a very small town in South Carolina called Bishopville. 
If you've ever been to Myrtle Beach, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, people traveling over going to Myrtle Beach, you've probably passed by this small town. I was raised by my mother and my father for the majority of my life. Uh, unfortunately, my father passed away when uh, I just graduated high school. My mother uh, and my father uh, divorced when I was uh, in high school, and my mother subsequently remarried uh, several years later and is living a fruitful life. But in the midst of my upbringing, there were some clear challenges. There were some clear issues. There were many things that we were ignorant of, and that ignorance produced certain consequences in our life. You know, the Bible says my people perish not for lack of prayer, not for lack of worship or giving, but for a lack of knowledge. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there are many things that my family experienced, not because God didn't love us, not because God didn't have a plan for us, and not because God could not intervene at any point in time. It was merely the result of a lack of knowledge in many areas. And guess what? The same is true for millions of families across the country and around the world. Parents are grappling with the real issues, the real challenges, the real responsibilities of raising children while sustaining a marriage, providing for the family, and so forth. And that's a real challenge. But many people lack the insight. They lack the perspective. They lack the knowledge to do that successfully. And it's not because they're bad people. It's not because somehow, you know, God prefers other people over them. No, in many cases, the lack of knowledge is the result of a lack of pursuit. Listen to me very carefully. In many cases, the lack of knowledge is in many cases the lack of pursuit. Have we pursued the insight, the understanding that we need to successfully parent? And that's true whether you're, whether you're raising children, your grandchildren, or supporting your adult children right now. There is a perspective. There is knowledge that is needed. But in most cases, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just going to fall upon you. It's not just going to just show up at your front door, you know, in an Amazon package or a Walmart package. No, you have to go looking for it. You know, the Bible says those who seek me shall find me. He says those who what? Seek me shall find me. And unfortunately, many of us, we succumbed to the perspective that we all parent based upon how we were parented. We'll look at what we like and we'll follow that. We'll look at what we didn't like and we won't follow that. And that becomes our philosophy and our strategy for parenting. But ladies and gentlemen, that's not the philosophy. That is not the perspective of parenting that we're supposed to have. The Bible says, as I referenced earlier in Matthew 6, we're supposed to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. That includes parenting. It includes wisdom for parenting. It includes insight for parenting. It includes a strategy for parenting. And every single one of us, those of us who have children, we are responsible for seeking out the best wisdom, the best insight, the best strategy in order to raise our children successfully. And that perspective, that best wisdom, that best uh, perspective is from the kingdom of God. The King of kings and the Lord of lords has a plan for your parenting and he has a plan for your children. And in our next segment, we're going to talk about the wisdom that is needed to raise children who are champions. Not many of us started in the wilderness of parenting with a guide to help us avoid the many challenges we would face. Most of us simply parented in response to how we were parented, hoping and praying that our kids would turn out all right. In the midst of all that we are facing today, both parents and grandparents need insight that could radically minimize parenting difficulties and set our kids up for success. In Marcus's book, Unscripted Responsibility, parents will learn the five key areas to focus upon while ignoring the thousands of areas beyond their control. Parents will be empowered on the journey of faith in raising kids who succeed in the world. Visit www dot marcusdbenjamin.com forward slash shop to order unscripted responsibility available as an ebook audiobook or physical book order unscripted responsibility today yeah. 
And we're back at Living in the Black. We're talking about the subject of unscripted responsibility. And we've been giving you some insight on the scriptural perspective of parenting. We've said that in Matthew chapter six, Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and all of his righteousness and everything else will be added unto us. So that means that if we seek God's perspective and his principles regarding parenting, then we'll find God adding grace, adding power, adding results in our lives and in the lives of our children. But many of us, we really didn't seek God's way of doing things. We parented or started parenting based upon what we didn't like <laughs> when we were being raised or what we did like when we were being raised. You know, Omika, my wife, will be celebrating 18 years of marriage this coming November. And we both can remember when we were driving home from the hospital, having our oldest son, Marcus Isaiah, in the back seat. And I can just remember driving down the road and looking back in the back seat at that car carrier, at the baby carrier, and thinking, what in the world <laughs> am I going to do with the son? And because I didn't really have a real strong base of knowledge for parenting, I just started reading everything I could. I started reading every book that I could on parenting, on raising a boy, raising a young man. Thankfully, we had a parenting conference at our church back maybe two years before we were married. So we were pulling back up tapes from that. Yes, I said it. Tapes. Yeah, I know some of you have no clue probably what a tape is, but yes, we had an audio cassette from that parenting conference and my wife and I got home and we started listening to it again to refresh ourselves on the biblical perspective of parenting. But that principle, the principle of seeking out insight and wisdom is very important for staying out of deficits. Many people, they abide in a deficit because they keep doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting what? A different result. And we know, according to society, that is the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different outcome. So we wanted a better outcome in our parenting and in our life and for our children than what we had experienced. We had loving parents. We had parents who loved us and endeavored to do the best that they could to raise us, but we wanted to take it to another level. We knew the kingdom of God had another level for raising uh, children who are champions. And so we wanted to get the wisdom to do that. And in the scriptures, the Bible says in the book of James chapter one, it says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God and God will give liberally to him, richly, lavishly to him. And God won't show partiality to him. But it goes on to say, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For if you waver or if you're dubious, if you're doubtful, he says you won't receive anything from the Lord. So my wife and I began to seek the wisdom of God on raising children who will be champions, raising children who will accomplish God's will for their lives, who will seek out God's purpose for their lives, who will glorify God in the endeavors of their life and know how to respond to failure and setbacks and shortcomings, knowing how to handle success gracefully, knowing how how to seek first the kingdom of God in their own lives and serve God in their generation. We began to seek the wisdom of God. Now, let me go ahead and say something that's pretty obvious. I want to make sure everybody across the country understands. <laughs> Omika and I are not perfect. Omika and I are definitely not perfect parents. I mean, more than once. I'm talking about more than twice. I'm talking about hundreds of times. We've had to apologize to our children for accusing them of something that they didn't do, for maybe disciplining them at a level that we should not have, have uh, disciplined them, for challenging them in an area where we shouldn't have challenged. I mean, we've had to come back and say, listen, Isaiah, you know, forgive daddy. Uh, please forgive daddy for that. You know, uh, Destiny, uh, listen, forgive daddy for that. We've had to do that because parenting isn't something that we will be perfect at, but yet there is wisdom from God. There is insight from God. There is a strategy from God that you and I can have. And that strategy, that wisdom will cause us to experience more successes than failures, more jubilant moments than challenging moments. 
And that's the plan of God. It's not God's plan. It's not God's plan for your parenting to be full of chaos and drama and difficulty. It's not God's plan for your children to be emotionally unstable and unhealthy. It's not God's plan for you to be coming home in the afternoon just loathing what you're going to find or what you're going to hear about what happened in your child's school. It's not God's plan for that to happen. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, that's the story of many people. That's the story of millions of people, even Christian parents, even believing parents. They are operating in a deficit in their parenting. And as a result, they're raising children who have deficits in their interpersonal skills, in their moral compass, and in the quality of their decision making. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to change that. Listen, we have to to change that. We have to make an adjustment because God's plan for your children, according to the text, is for them to be as olive plants round about your table. I mean, full of anointing, full of purpose, full of potential, full of ability. Whenever you see olives in the scripture, it, it represents purpose. It represents prosperity. It represents potential because the olive isn't just a commodity by itself. No, it's what the olive produces, the oil it produces, the fire that comes from the oil, the aroma that comes from the oil, the fragrance that comes from the oil. It's the productivity and the potential of the olive that makes it valuable. And I'm telling you in the name of the Lord Jesus, your children have purpose. Your children have potential. Your children have a calling on their life in the, in the church setting and in the secular setting. And we have a responsibility to raise them up and equip them to fulfill that calling and that responsibility. We have an assignment, a trust, a stewardship from God to present to him adults who are ready to serve him, adults who are ready to follow after him, adults who can stand under the tests and the trials of life and see God bring glory and strength and anointing into their lives. We have that responsibility. Man, I feel the presence of God here. I'm telling you that your children, no matter where they are, adult or still in your house, there is a plan for their lives. There is a plan for them to live in the black. There's a plan for them to live in uh, enhancement and strength. There is a plan for them to overcome the, the opportunities for deficit and for them to see black living in their life instead of red living. But you and I, we have a responsibility. The Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. But don't let him doubt. Don't let him waver because God will give wisdom richly to you. Now, when the Bible says richly, and when he'll give it to you lavishly, I mean, just think about wealth. You remember, I think it was uh, Scrooge McDuck in the, one of the Walt Disney uh, sitcoms or movies back when I was a kid, and Scrooge McDuck would, uh, didn't have any friends, didn't have people who liked him, but he had a lot of money. He had a lot of money. He would be in his basement, you know, throwing up his coins and his money and wallowing around in there, and he was just a wealthy duck. But he was wealthy with money, but he was poor in relationships. He was in the black with his money, but he was in the red in his relationships. And when the Bible speaks of wisdom, when it speaks of God giving wisdom to you, he's saying as lavishly as a rich person has an abundance of money, that's how lavishly I want to pour wisdom on your life. That's how abundantly I want to pour wisdom on your life. And I want you to believe me for that. So right now, as I get ready to go to a break, I want you to tag somebody, share this video, let them know that God has a plan for their children. And Marcus is talking about it on Living in the Black.
listen, I hope you are as excited and you are receiving. I'm telling you, I'm here and I'm so excited about what God is saying and doing. I know it's being a blessing. I know it's helping you. I know it is challenging and stretching your perspective of parenting because God wants you in the black. He wants your parenting in the black and he wants your kids in the black. Now, as I begin to wind down today's episode, I really want you to understand there are five areas that we have to zero in on parenting. Now, I know there are a million different scenarios and situations that our children grow up facing and that we face while raising them or even helping support them when they're adults. But I have scaled these thousands of circumstances and situations down to five key categories. And I'm going to spend all month talking about these five categories. But in this last segment, I wanna to introduce to you one of them. And that category is the category of moral soundness. Yes, parents, we are responsible for raising and cultivating a sense of moral soundness in our children. You know, there are so many experiences and challenges that children face and that even as parents, we face because we were once children. And there are many parents today who are trying to unravel themselves from decisions that they made in their teenage years that if someone had helped them to discover a moral compass, a sense of moral soundness, a sense of God's perspective over their life, they would not have done those particular things. I will never forget, I was getting ready to fly to Europe, Amsterdam, when I was graduated when I just graduated from high school. I was going to play basketball and my high school principal said something to me that was just game changing. I did not realize the different culture that Amsterdam would represent from how I grew up in Bishopville. That's another conversation for another day. But he told me, he said, Marcus, don't do anything in Amsterdam that you wouldn't be joyful and excited about telling your children about. He said, don't do anything in Amsterdam that you wouldn't be joyful and excited about telling your children about. Now, when we got to Amsterdam, there were a lot of opportunities for a lot of <laughs> deviant behavior, sinful behavior. But I'm so thankful that he gave me a sense of moral direction. He gave me a sense of moral soundness. He gave me a perspective that said, you know what, Marcus, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to explain to my kid that. I don't want to tell my child one day that, yeah, when daddy was in Amsterdam, daddy did X, Y, or Z, and I'm not proud of that. No, I want to tell my son and my daughter celebratory stories. I want to tell them godly stories. I want to tell them about the temptation that I resisted, <laughs> not the temptation that I succumbed to. And so I'm thankful for that. But we are responsible for creating a sense of moral soundness. Now listen to what Malachi says. Malachi chapter two, verse 15 says, and why did God make one? Why did God create marriage? He did it for a godly seed. Now hold on for a second. That's so simple and so powerful at the same time. He said, God created the institution of marriage. He created a man and a woman coming together and joining themselves together in holy matrimony, having an honorable life one toward the other, not for their happiness, although happiness should be a byproduct, not for their economic satisfaction, although economic strength should be a byproduct. But he said, no, I created the institution of marriage. I want two, a man and a woman to be one and to what? Have children because I'm looking for a godly seed. You see that? A godly seed. What does that represent? It represents a ch children who have a godly perspective, children who have a kingdom of God perspective, children who have a biblical perspective of life. So our, our primary responsibility, our first responsibility for our children isn't to raise children that look like us, you know, isn't to dress our children like us, nothing wrong with that, you know, not taking them to the park, certainly we should, not teaching them how to hit a baseball, how to catch a ball, how to do ballet, how to sing or how to shoot a basketball, all those things are good. But that's not the primary purpose of marriage and having children. The scripture says the kingdom of God perspective is that the first reason why I want a man and a woman to come together in holy matrimony and have children is so that they can present to me, they can present to the culture, they can present to the world a godly seed, a godly representation. 
And I'm telling you, this is where most of us have struggled. This is where most of the, uh, the deviant behavior in children has come from. This is where the destruction of families have come from. This is where the challenging circumstances have arisen is because we made periphery things primary and we made the primary thing in the peripheral. The primary focus of parenting is to train up a child in the way of God, to train up a child to have a God awareness, a moral compass, a sense of moral direction, a sense of godly direction for their life, because they're going to encounter a culture. They're going to encounter a world that is anti-Christ, anti-God, that is for themselves, self-driven, self-satisfying, uh, and all of those things. But I want you to raise children who have a godly perspective, a moral compass. The world will get darker and darker, but I want you to raise children who will make it lighter and lighter. The world will get more and more unflavorful, but I want you to raise children who are salt and, and bring flavor. The world will begin to disintegrate, but I want you to raise children who are salt, who can not only flavor the world, but can preserve the world from its own destruction. This is what God is saying. And I'm telling you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, many of us across the world, we have to repent to God and even apologize to our children because we failed to raise them with a godly perspective. Now, by godly perspective, I'm not just talking about going to church. I'm not just talking about making sure they're in church every Sunday or in Bible study or vacation Bible school. All those things are good and are important. But listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, nothing is more important than a godly house. Oh, you didn't see that one coming, did you? We, we tend to put all the responsibility on the church, on the youth pastor, the children's pastor, the youth group, you know, help my children, get them a sense of godly direction and so forth. But no, 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 no. The primary place of godly expression, the primary place of godly development, the primary place where a sense of moral soundness comes is from you, the parent your household. And I want to challenge you to get a copy of this book and let it bless you. It will direct your life into God's purpose for parenting.